kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I'm a producer for podcasts here at a kids company about. We're on a mission to empower a generation of kids through diverse storytelling. And we're doing this through podcasts like the one you're listening to right now. Check out all our books, podcasts, and classes by visiting akidsco.com. Hi, I'm Ariane. I'm a journalist and a college professor. And I'm your host for Is That True? A kids podcast about facts. Each week, we'll go on a fact-checking investigation. And we'll do this with experts whose job it is to know these things and enthusiasts who are people who just really love the topics we'll be learning about. As a journalist, I ask questions every day. Questions like, why is something the way it is? Or what happened in history? Or what can we look into to know more? And it's so amazing to me that now I get to do all of that with you. We're going to ask these questions together. And along the way, we'll learn how to check to see if we know what we think we know. Uncovering the truth is lots of fun for me. And if you're a fact finder, truth seeker kind of kid too, you've definitely come to the right place. This season on Is That True, we'll investigate world records and Olympic history. We'll go around the world, from Africa to Antarctica. And we'll learn a thing or two about how to sniff out the truth along the way. Well, speaking of going to Antarctica, today is that day. We have a fact that is about that very place. Hi, my name is Owen. I am nine years old and I come from Maryland. Did you know that in Antarctica, lakes and rivers are red? Red rivers? I've never seen a red river before. So I wonder if that's true. We'll have to investigate. But first, let's talk a little bit about what we do know about Antarctica. The thing I immediately think about is just how cold it is in Antarctica. And when I say cold, I mean really cold. Like it's the coldest continent and the windiest and the iciest. It's pretty much covered by a huge piece of ice. And then I think about where Antarctica is located. It's the world's most southernmost continent. And guess what else is there? The South Pole, not to be confused with the North Pole, which is a different, very cold place. And where some might even say that Santa lives. I wanted to know more about Antarctica, especially so that we could figure out if Owen's fact is true. So I looked for an expert and I found Karen Romano Young, who is a friend of a kid's podcast about She's a children's book author who created a series of comics called Antarctic Log. After the break, I'll take you to meet Karen Romano Young. And I can't wait for you to hear what she says. Be right back. Hey there, listeners. Ari here. Have you been listening to an episode and heard kid voices just like yours? asking questions, and telling us super cool facts? Maybe like this? What type of adventures are there? Do you know, to see at night as well as an owl, you will need eyes as big as grapefruits? Wow! What curious and thoughtful minds you all have! We'd love to hear from you and include you in the show. Just write to us with your grown-up at listen at a kids podcast about.com and we'll tell you all about the awesome opportunities for you to share and get involved and thank you to lily and kai for contributing their voices and to you too i'm so excited to hear from you
My friends, hello, my name is Ben Tartine, and I am the head camp counselor at Camp Adventure, a summer camp podcast. Camp Adventure is a first-of-its-kind summer camp that you can listen to anywhere, like in the car, under your blanket fort, while you're going for a walk, I mean, everywhere. And it's a podcast for everyone. I tell stories about growing up, exploring my backyard, building castles out of chocolate, all kinds of stuff. There's sing-alongs led by the fabulous Hannah Glaver. We host a weekly challenge that you and your friends, neighbors, and grown-ups can all do together. There are games and scavenger hunts and jokes, bird song calls, learning words in another language together, and just so much great stuff for every single kid out there. I think you're going to enjoy it. New episodes release every Saturday throughout the summer, and you can listen to them anytime, anywhere, and in any order. So go wild. Listen to Camp Adventure wherever podcasts are found. Adventure, we venture. Welcome back to Is That True, the podcast that explores how we know the things we know. At the start of this episode, Owen told us that in Antarctica, lakes and rivers are red. What do you think? Is that true? It's time to investigate our facts from Owen. And to look into that, we found the perfect person. Hi, my name is Karen Romano Young. I am primarily a children's author and illustrator, but a few years ago, I was called on to begin doing science communications from the field, which means going literally onto ships or to Antarctica or to the Arctic with scientists and then writing about um, their experiences for the general public and for children. And at one point, I began to do um, illustration to go along with it. I began doing comics Um, as a way to tell some particularly difficult stories and developed that into um, a weekly Antarctic log science comic that is all about the Arctic, Antarctica, and climate change, which is the big topic in both those places, anywhere in the world that it's happening. I also have a book coming out about Antarctica in the next year called Antarctica, The World's Melting Continent, where I'm telling a lot of my personal stories as well as science stories about the frozen continent. Wow, I love that. That's so cool. So how did you go from perhaps writing about things that you may or may not have seen and into a world where you are actually traveling to all these places? I guess first it came out of being an educational writer and um, scientists wanting to communicate with kids in the classroom. And so I began by doing materials that were just for the classroom from them. And then one of the things that I was being asked to do in advance of an expedition to the ocean was to interview everyone who was going to be on the ship, from the captain of the ship to the lead scientist to the undergrad students and lowliest, you know, person who is taking out the trash, whatever, and um, do profiles of them. And the very last person that I was supposed to profile was the person who was going on board to do the shipboard communications, to tell the stories back to the shore. And the first thing she said was, oh, I'm not going on that. And I said, well, they think you're going on that. And she said, I can't go. I, you know, and I told them and they somehow they had miscommunicated. And this was like two weeks before they were supposed to set sail. And so I called them and I said, this person is not available. She's not going to be part of your crew. And I don't know who you're going to find in a pinch, but I could do it. And I put up my hand and they didn't have anyone else. And I already knew all the science and knew all the people because I had talked to everyone. And so they just said, okay, come. And it started from there. And I absolutely fell in love with being in the field with scientists and with telling their stories. Amazing. What a great story of how you can kind of take an opportunity and just volunteer and make it happen. Yes. (laughs) So you are the perfect person for us to ask this question to. So... 
Is it true that in Antarctica, lakes and rivers are red? Yes and no. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it, that Antarctica even has lakes and rivers. Um, a lot of people get confused between the Arctic and Antarctic. Um, the Arctic is the one in the north where the polar bears are, and it's a frozen ocean. It's just an ocean covered in ice. Antarctica is in the south where the penguins are, and it is actually a continent of land covered in ice. And so like any land that has water, it has rivers and lakes. They are, tend to be frozen solid. And there's one, though, we know of, there might be another one, that has such salty water underneath that even though the top of the glacier is frozen, the lake underneath is salty. And because there's a lot of iron in the rock that's around the lake, the water that flows out is red because it's full of iron oxide, which is what happens when iron hits oxygen, which is rust, okay? So it's rust colored, really red. It's flowing down this blue white frozen glacier. And it, so it's called Blood Falls because it really does look like something inside there, you know, some giant snow monster is bleeding. Um, but so far, and I talked to um, Jessica Badgley, who is a PhD candidate at the University of Washington and who went to Blood Falls and studied it to find out what made it red. And all of the science that I just told you came from her study. And she says that there could be other places that have this salt and iron content. But right now, the only one they know about is Blood Falls. So, yes, Owen, there is at least one lake and river that's red in Antarctica. And it's red because of the rock around it that has iron. And you know how things can get rusty. And the super smart person who studied Blood Falls and told Karen about it is Jessica Badgley. So yes, the lake underneath and the river that flows out of it and the waterfall that comes from it is blood red. But it's the only one we know about in Antarctica so far. So since you have been traveling to all these amazing places, we know that you have been learning a lot of really cool facts. Well, I would love to share another Antarctic story. Um, I do Antarctic log comics once a week, and sometimes kids send me questions. I created a comic out of this question, which you'll see. Um, but I also did another one in the past when a, a young person asked me whether it was true that on the beach in Antarctica, there are a lot of penguin heads just rolling around. Penguin heads on the beach. And so I knew of a scientist who had just gotten off um, the beach where she had been studying leopard seals for three weeks. And so I wrote to her and I said, is this true? And she said, yeah, it actually is. Because if you're a leopard seal, you don't want to spend all your energy eating some bony head or some bony feet or some bony wings. You just want to eat the fat central part of the penguin. So everything else is just lying there and yeah, you might think it was skeletons, and of course it is, but everything's frozen in Antarctica, so it doesn't really decompose that quickly. So, yes. Wow. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. It, it just really leads to some interesting conversations. Out of all of these very cool places you've been going, do you have any favorites? I really do have a favorite. Palmer Station is one of the three United States research stations in Antarctica. There's McMurdo, um, that's the big one. There's the South Pole, um, that's also pretty decent sized. And then there's Palmer Station, which has at most 45 people, you know, and that's everybody from the cook to the chief engineer to the chief scientist. It is a little tiny town on the coast of the Antarctic Peninsula. It's absolutely beautiful. There are, are penguins and whales and seals all over the place. You can go out and hike up the glacier and hike out on the rocks. And when I was there working with a team of scientists, um, we were going out in a boat every day to basically gather water to take a look at the phytoplankton, which are the microscopic little things that live in the water. I really loved that. That is a treasured time in my life. For those of us who may not have originally started studying science, as in we're not scientists, and we just want to know more, how would you advise us to start 
looking and exploring and learning from our home with, you know, either by ourselves or with our grownups? Well, I am not a scientist either. And I didn't even have that much science education. I'm just really curious. When I heard the question about Red Rivers, I remembered about Blood Falls. And so I went and looked it up on the internet and it led me straight to the scientists who had been trying to find out what made it red. And I was able to get in touch with them through the internet and say, are there other places? And can you explain this to me? Um, it's a fantastic way that we have to learn about things now. Um, and you don't have to feel silly on the internet. You don't have to feel like um, a dumb person who hasn't had a lot of science background. You can just ask questions. And if there's one thing I know about scientists, they are extremely comfortable with asking dumb questions. If it was a question everybody knew the answer to, they would not be interested in it. They're only interested in the new things that no one knows yet. And so if you ask a question about something you don't know about, you really are being a scientist in the same vein that they are, and they really will, will respect that. And you can learn a lot by asking those kinds of questions. Ah, I love that so much. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you very much. I, it's been a pleasure to be here. And thank you also to Owen for um, asking his question about um, Red Rivers. Keep asking questions, Owen. Is it true that in Antarctica, lakes and rivers are red? Yes, it's true. There could be more, but we know for sure about one. There is a lake, and the river that flows out of it is called Blood Falls. But there's a reason why it's red. The rock that's around the lake has a lot of iron, so the water is actually full of a rust that looks really, really red. I would have never guessed this. Thank you so much, Owen, for helping us learn this fact. Thank you to children's book author Karen Romano Young for being our expert today. You can check out the Antarctic Log comics by visiting antarcticlog.com. Is That True is written by me, Ariane Nettles. Our show is edited and produced by Ari Mathay with help from Matthew Winner. Audio production is by Chad Michael Snavely and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory. And this show was brought to you by a kid's podcast about. Do you have a fact you'd like us to investigate? Write to us at listen at kidspodcastabout.com and check out other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting a kidsco.com. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at a kid's company about. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at a kid's podcast about. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Yeah.